I just scooped into this perfect shepherd's pie. It has the beautiful pillowy mashed potatoes on top. We've built flavors underneath in the filling. I'm gonna take you through each step so you can make this whole dish just like this and enjoy it all winter long. Let's go. Shepherd's pie is a great meal when it's kind of those cold months. You want something warm, cozy, hearty. It's a one pot meal. Sort of, we're gonna talk about the technically because you do have to make mashed potatoes. But what we're gonna do is change it up instead of using more traditional lamb, I'm going to use ground beef just because it's usually a little bit more easy for people to find. So what I'm starting with is the potatoes because you do have to make mashed potatoes. This is where you do use one extra pot, but you know what, it's okay. It's mashed potatoes, They're, they sound like work, they sound like something you only have on a special occasion. Growing up, we only had them if we went to grandma's house usually or if we had some special meal at home. But you know what? They're actually pretty easy. It's kind of like a pie crust. Once you do them a few times, you realize, why do I complain about these? You want to peel a few potatoes, and we're only doing enough here to do a topping for it. So I'm getting off these. You know, lately I've had all potatoes, no matter when I buy them, how fresh they are, where I store them. They want to turn green, so I'm going to get off all that green. But what we're doing is taking that peeling off of our scrubbed potatoes, and I'm going to dice them, you can see, into somewhat small pieces, just so they cook at an even rate. So usually I maybe take each potato in about thirds, think of it as, and then I cut them again into another, just halfway the other way, and then just dice them into pieces. That just makes it so they cook at an even rate. And we really just want these to cook alongside as we're starting to get the filling for the shepherd's pie going. Now, this is, like I said, it can be a pretty easy meal, but you could actually, if you wanted to assemble this the morning of, you wanna have it, have it ready to go in the fridge, like a casserole almost, and then just have it go into the oven when you wanna warm it through. Because everything is cooked, we then just like can warm it through in the oven and add a little bit of browning to the potatoes on top. So once all your potatoes are right in there, we can just take this over. It's a really simple process. We're gonna add water to it. Start with cold water. I'm gonna turn the stove on, let this come up to a boil, cover it, let it simmer, and then, of course, do always salt your potato water. It just seasons them. We're gonna let those cook until they're tender. And while they're gonna go tender, I'm gonna make sure I start melting my butter in my skillet over here. And this is where then we're going to get ready our onion and our carrot and start the filling. While the potatoes are cooking, I have that butter melting and you wanna make sure it's hot because you want your oil or fat to be hot before you add what we're gonna add now, which is our onion and our carrot. So this is that beginning base flavor. And so what I'm doing is just dicing them up somewhat even, but don't worry if it's not perfect. We're, we're doing this for home cooking. Home cooking should be rustic, you know? Like if you want perfection, no, that's not what home cooking's about. So what we have here is our carrot and our onion diced up. And we're gonna add them to that butter, which the butter is gonna give it flavor, obviously. So we're gonna put it right down in here. And do you hear that sizzle? That's definitely what you want. And when I add them, I always make sure again, season a little bit along the way. And at the end, you're gonna have a much more seasoned dish. I'm gonna add some pepper too while that's going and let it just saute until it's starting to soften. So the onions are just beginning to soften. I don't want the carrots to go too limp or soft. So I wanna now add the ground beef that we're gonna use. And what I want to happen here is just break it up as I'm going and start letting it cook and brown until it's fully cooked through. So this is a pretty easy, quick step. And then we're gonna just lightly make sure we season it with herbs. We're gonna thicken it a little bit. It's a really homey dish. The meat is browned through. You wanna make sure it's browned through. And now what we wanna do is think about the flavors we're gonna add. Obviously we have some herbs we're gonna add. We're gonna build flavor. But one, a great way to build some flavor is add a little bit of red wine. Now this is gonna act like it would kind of in a bolognese where it's going to add this acidic element. And we're gonna cook that off. I want this wine to be mostly gone. So what I'm gonna do is cook it. It's gonna actually help tenderize the meat even more actually but also impart this nice, just undertone flavor, not wine forward. Don't worry about that. And if you don't drink wine, leave this part out, but it does add a nice flavor element that just boosts the overall finished dish. So you can see when I'm stirring it, that wine is mostly dry now. We have just a few little pockets and what we're gonna do is add in the flour. A small amount of flour is gonna help just tighten all this up and give it the right texture and body. We don't want to soup underneath the mashed potatoes. We want it to have a nice, a nice hold together, but still be you know, something that you just kind of want to spoon and eat. So what I'm doing is stirring that flour in just till it cooks. That flour only needs to cook for about a minute and you can tell it gets pasty and tightens up. You want to cook the raw flour flavor out. So then what I do is have some beef stock. Now I like to use bouillon usually, so I put it in a salad shaker because I find it so much easier <laughs> to blend up. And then just pour that right in. And we're going to let that just come to a simmer. And while it's doing that, I want to think of more flavor. 
So Worcestershire is a great way to add a little umph of flavor. You know it, we use it in party mix, we use it in so many things because it has that beautiful flavor. I'm gonna let this just come to a simmer. We're gonna get some herbs ready and throw them in. And then the filling, once we have the peas and everything, is done and we can finish up with the potatoes. Once it's at a simmer and you can see it just tightens up enough, like if you look at this, look how beautiful that is. We can now throw everything else together. So we have some peas, they were frozen and thawed. You need to do nothing more to them. And then I do have a few herbs here and I wanna put them at the end so you actually taste them. So obviously I have some parsley. So parsley is gonna have that fresh green flavor and if you think parsley doesn't have flavor, it's because you're using dried parsley and it does have no flavor. <laughs> Dad, make sure to use some fresh parsley. And then I also have some thyme and some rosemary that I minced up. And I'm just gonna take all those. I want them to have a more fresh flavor. So that's why I'm adding them in here at the end, just to mix and warm them through before you put it in the oven. And mixing it all together, just instantly you smell the herbs. You see now this wonderful filling and how it's hearty. You get the beef, you get the carrot, you get everything in here. We're just gonna put this now back, back together. So I'm gonna go drain the potatoes. We'll quick make those, put them on top, and we have a meal. The potatoes are drained, and first what I wanna do, you can use a potato masher, I'm gonna use a hand mixer because it's a little bit easier, is mash them up, mix them up as much as I can to get the lumps out before we add in our milk and our butter. It just makes sure that they get really a lot of those lumps out. You want them to be super tender when you drain them. So with that, I'm gonna add in some room temperature butter. I want that to start melting into it. That's obviously gonna add a richness. And then some room temperature or warmed up is even better. Whole milk. Again, we want just the right consistency. And we wanna make sure that they're gonna have all that beautiful flavor, but also the creaminess that we need. And once they're mostly smooth with that, that's when I add in some of the extra stuff. So we want this to be flavorful. We have a really delicious filling, but Parmesan cheese, it goes a long way. And what we're gonna do is add in some beautifully grated fresh Parmesan, which really acts as a seasoning too. You know, it has that nuttiness in the flavor, but also has a nice saltiness, almost just a slight brininess, I would say. And you really want that here. So what I'm doing is adding it in, it's gonna melt into it. You can put more on top, but it really just, it elevates the potatoes, just like it would mashed potatoes, obviously. But it really adds something extra special to them too, which I think is really important. I think any potato needs, Black pepper, no questions, always black pepper. I also think a little bit of salt, but then mix it up and taste it because sometimes with that cheese, you don't need to over salt it. So stir this in, see how it just almost instantly mixes into it. It smells so good. I'm gonna taste them. It's perfect. And I could just eat those. Then what we're gonna do now you just put them on top. I like to kind of dollop them at first just to make sure you don't mess up anything. So we're gonna set this aside. This is the beautiful part. You can give them one final stir here. Just love, look how good those look. And then I'm just gonna start putting them on. I sometimes like to leave a little bit of a ring. It's more traditional to cover the whole filling, but there's something about it that can be nice to see what's inside of it too. So I'm gonna put them kind of in the center and then I'll start working them out to the edges but you can see how luscious and pillowy these are. That's exactly what you want as you're doing this. Look how beautiful that is. Once you have them on, you can just start smoothing them out. And this is kind of the fun part. So I know some people, there's all different things people like to do with these. You can smooth them out perfectly if you want. You can also just do what I'm doing where you make, see how I just made a quick swirl? Because those edges in the oven can actually get browned up if you want them to. It's kind of whatever you want. You can also, some people like to scrape a fork if you scrape a fork across, do you see all those ridges? Those will then become browned in the oven. So it's really whatever you wanna do. I'm gonna finish this up like this. We're gonna put this right into the oven, let it warm through, crisp up on top, and it's time to eat. When you pull it out of the oven, look how beautiful it is. You want it to be bubbling around to make sure everything gets warmed through. Those potatoes, I like to let get a little bit of brown. You can put the broiler on just for a minute or two at the end to make sure, or don't let them get brown, it doesn't really matter. Everything is cooked when it goes in the oven. It just brings it all together. So this is when you can just serve it up. And this is, what I love about this is look, you have those creamy mashed potatoes. I mean, look at how this works together. It's, it's such a beautiful, beautiful dish. And I wish you could smell the, herbs that we put at the end, that really makes a big difference. All those flavor builders we did with the wine and everything else. Now, you could of course put some fresh parm on at the end if you wanted to, just for a little heft, but it really doesn't need it.
It is so good. It is honestly just like a beautiful cozy blanket is wrapping around you. The flavors are warm. The dish is obviously warm, but it has all that comfort. You have hardiness of meat and vegetables, those beautiful pillowy mashed potatoes on top that have that extra flavor with that Parmesan. It's a match made in heaven, people. And look at this perfect, like how it just comes together and yet it's soft enough that it's not just solidified. You don't want it solidified. You want it to be still soft and viscous. It's the perfect texture. So what I hope you do, I hope you make this. Because if you do, you're gonna be in love and you're gonna continue to make it. And that's the point of good food is to get you excited and maybe just make something at home that you wouldn't usually make. Share this video around so other people can see how easy it is. If I can make it, anybody can make this. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe. All my other recipes are on there so you can print them off and use them however much you want. Enjoy.